We'll start with the prayers. Om Apyayantu Mamangani Vat Pranas Chakshuhu Shrotramatho Balamindriyani Cha Sarvani Sarvam Brahman Upanishadam Maham Brahmanira Kuriyam Mama Brahmanira Karod Anira Karana Mastva Anira Karana Me Astu Tadatmani Nerate E Upanishadsu Dharmas Te Te Mai Santu Te Mai Santu Om Shanti 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 We are doing Keno Upanishad. We have finished the first chapter of the Upanishad, which has got seven Mahavakyas. It's a brilliant uh, chapter. Verse one, verse number two and three, then from verse four to eight. So seven Mahavakyas are there in the first chapter. Last week, I started with the second chapter. Uh, today, what I want to do is, I want to give you an introduction to chapter two, which is given by Shankaracharya in his commentary. I found that introduction brilliant to understand the five verses of the second chapter. So I will go straight into the introduction portion and here what Shankaracharya is trying to bring out is that the entire first chapter is the teaching. What is the teaching and what is the definition of the, of the reality in the first chapter? Or what is the definition of Atma? Shrotrasya Shrotram. It is the ear of the ear, eye of the eye, mind of the mind, prana of the prana. That is how the definition was given. And in the second chapter, what Shankaracharya wants to say is that this Atma cannot be directly experienced by anybody. This is the central message of the second chapter. Direct experience of Brahman. Brahman means my own real nature. It is coined as Brahman. It is not possible because this Brahman is my essential nature. Swa Atma. It is the inner essence of all experiencers of the world. For example, you are an experiencer of your body and your world. You live in India, you live in America, you live in Japan, you live in Korea, you live in Singapore. I am the experiencer of my body and the external world which is in front of me. But the most important point, it is a very subtle point which the Upanishads teach us is the body is inert, the prana is inert, the mind by itself is inert. But there is a sentient entity which governs this body, the knowing principle. That knowing principle is the content of this body. It is the content of every body. That is the inner essence. Now, this inner essence cannot be objectified. That is what Shankara Bhashyam is trying to tell us. 
you can see the world in front of you because it is an object of the sense organs but the sense organs are governed by the mind the mind is governed by the consciousness so this is how you should be very clear when you come to vedanta when veda says you are immortal you should know what do you mean by that you that you which veda is trying to tell us is i am the consciousness awareness principle which is immortal which can never die and this is the truth of all the upanishads kena upanishad has a very unique way of revealing this truth we saw this same truth expounded in mundak upanishad as para vidya apara vidya knowledge of aksharam what cannot be destroyed in the world is aksharam that is how mundak upanishad revealed this atma kaivalya upanishad used the principle of three states of consciousness exactly like mandukya upanishad this kena upanishad is using the gross body subtle body to reveal the light in which we see this body brahmana upanishad has this mantra which is very very useful to study the kena upanishad what is this mantra says nanyo das datosti drishtaha nanyo datosti shrotaha nanyo datosti mantaha this witness sakshi consciousness principle is never heard but it is the hearer it is never thought but it is the thinker it is never known but it is the knower this is how brahmana upanishad describes atma what does this mean it means it is not an object whatever is known to you is an object the book is known to you the pen is known to you the mobile is known to you the house is known to you they are all objects but the knower which is knowing the book or the pen or the mobile or the or the uh, house is the consciousness factor this was a brilliant way in which brahmana upanishad describes it so shankara acharya in his bhashyam these are the points which are made by shankara acharya when he introduces the second chapter i found this brilliant introduction because if you understand the introduction then you can understand the five verses very easily that is why i have brought in this slides into the class notes today this just been typed and it's just been added now two levels are there in this world what are the two levels the first level is the mind seeing the world through the sense organs this is what is known as i know the world i explained to you last week how shankaracharya builds this topic the second is i know i know the world which means sakshi is seeing the mind and the mind is seeing the world the sakshi seeing the mind is paramarthika satyam this is a higher order of reality see realization of our true self is not is not very difficult we all are realizing but only we don't know how to how to uh, how to uh, draw a conclusion from our experiences i will explain that as we go down the slides 
So, Vyavaharika Satyam means the transactional reality. The transactional reality is the direct seer, direct experiencer, which is called as Pramata. Pramata means knower. This Pramata is a knower with the mind. Very important point. Sakshi is a knower without the mind. Please register this fact very, very well. Because this is extremely important. People who have done Vedanta for 30 years, they say they have not realized the self because they have not understood the two terms in Vedanta. One is Pramata and the second is Sakshi. Whenever you use the word Sakshi, it is always without the mind. You have to drop the mind and say, I'm Sakshi. You have to use the mind to say it, but internally you have to say, I am the Sakshi of the mind. Very important. This is what is called as cognitive change. This is a change in understanding this word. If I understand the word with the help of Shastra, I am a wise person. If I don't have the Shastra as the backup to understand the world, then I am ignorant person. Ajnani. You can be a male or a female. Ajnani can be a male or it can be a female. The sex has got nothing to do with the gender, has got nothing to do with the wise person. A wise person is a person who understands that I have an existence in this world without the mind. That is a wise person. He also knows that he has an existence with the mind, which is called as Pramata. So in this talk, I want everyone to understand the difference between Pramata and Sakshi. Sakshi is without the mind. Pramata is with the mind. So whenever you say, I heard, I have seen, what happens is you are using the instruments called as the sense organs, the mind, the body. The, so when you are using the uh, uh, sense organs, it is called as Pramata. Pramata is another name of Jiva, who is in this body, the soul in this body. So the soul in this body, when it is using the instruments, it is called as Pramata. The same soul, when it is not using this instruments, as in the deep sleep state, it is called as Sakshi. It is the same entity. Same Sakshi is the Pramata. Same Sakshi is the ego I. Don't forget this. this is our, these are fundamental technical points. I'm making it very simple so that all of you can understand. This chart here is brilliant chart. It's a very, very uh, beautiful way of understanding Vedanta. If you miss these points, you will find what is this uh, Shrotra, Sya Shrotra, Manaso, Mano, Yata, all that we don't understand. Kero Upanishad is a very, very high quality Upanishad, very, very uh, intense Upanishad. It's got very deep meaning in it. It brings out the Atma in us very subtly. But if you understand the process, it becomes easy. So, whenever I am using the word Pramata, it is always without the instrument of Shastra. 
For example, you say, I am a doer, I am a mother, I am a father. All this is what? It is only you are using the consciousness in this body. To say, I am Pramata, you need consciousness. You need the sense organs. So generally, Pramata is associated without the Shastra. Sakshi is associated with the help of Shastra. Because sha Sakshi, you can know only when you have understood and gone through Upanishads. Otherwise, a lay, lay person, a common man, will not understand what is Sakshi, what is Pramata and all that. See how deep understanding is required. See, initially we may have done these Upanishads before also. There are several people who are attending this talk who are doing this Upanishad with me the third time. Some are doing the fourth time. But as you learn further and further, you will find that there is a refinement in your thinking process. Another beautiful point which Shankaracharya brings out in his commentary is, he says that we do... We work not for a new experience, but we work for a new conclusion, which is based on available experiences. Very important point Shankaracharya brings out. When you hear, when you, when you read this sentence in the Bhashya, immediately you should know that I don't have to look for another new experience. I am already having the experience of Brahman. Brahmatvam, the immortality, is my own nature. But I don't know. The problem is ignorance. So I don't have to go to Samadhi state, like the Yoga Shastra people say, you have to sit in Samadhi and go into uh, 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 Nirvikalpa, uh, Nirvikalpa Gavastha, and then you can realize, no. In Upanishad is very simple. It says, just analyze your own experiences as it is today. And try to use the Upanishad knowledge to understand and analyze your experience. When you use the Upanishad knowledge, you will know your truth. You will know your real nature, which is not this body which is not the mind, but which is Sakshi, which is consciousness. So with the help of Shastra Pramanam as the source of knowledge, I declare I am not the Pramata, but I am the Sakshi. Not, not now, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but all the time. So what does this mean? I am Sakshi, I am Sakshi, I am Sakshi, I am consciousness, I am awareness, is continuously the experience of all of us. Whether you are in the waking state, whether you are in the dream state, whether you are in the sleep state, what is our experience? I exist and I am conscious. Nobody says I was not conscious in my sleep state. I was there, but I didn't know that I was there. That is because the mind was absent. So Shravanam, the listening portion, gives us the Atma Jnanam. Mananam is an internal process which each one of us has to do it. You have to ask the question yourself. Am I the waker? This is how you do this manana. Am I a dreamer? Am I the sleeper? Are these three states permanent? Or are they changing? If these three states are changing, then it cannot be me. Because my experience is what? I am always there. So, can I now bring in the Shastra? Shastra means the Upanishadic statement. It says that Atma is other than the three states. 
Ah, oh, now I get it. Yes, yes, yes. This is such. That is what is called as mananam. Then the niridhyasnam is the third final step. Whenever I get into trouble in my day-to-day -day worldly experiences, I should bring back this knowledge that I am Sakshi. Because that will give me the freedom from any sorrow. Any type of sorrow, whether it is sorrow, physical sorrow, mental sorrow, social sorrow, any type of sorrow, if you bring the torchlight of Shastra and expose that torchlight to your circumstances, that your consciousness factor, you are not the mind or the body, immediately you will drop your sorrow. This is what happened to Arjuna in the battlefield. In the battlefield, he was killing so many people. Lord Krishna says, don't worry, that is the job of your body. It is the product of the body. So many Kauravas were killed, so many Pandavas were killed, but ultimately he said, don't worry about it. But the real knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita is what? This aspect of awareness, consciousness, which never leaves us. It never is born, it is never gone. We do not require a new mystic experience. But what we need is revised conclusion about ourselves based on the additional Shastra Pramanam. So in our spiritual study of all the Upanishadic study, we should remember this particular point. I am not looking for some light. I am not looking for some sound in my uh, meditation. I am not looking for some circular lights and so many things. No. I want to be my real, with my own real nature by using the torchlight of the Upanishad. For example, we use a microscope to see the organism. Organism can be seen by the physical eyes, but you can't go to that depth of understanding. When you look it through the microscope, what happens? You go to the deep nature of that organism. Suppose you want to see a star. You can see a star from your eye, with your eyes, but it is very, it's like a dot. Suppose you, you bring in the torch, uh, the telescope, the, uh, another instrument, what happens? I can see this red circle of the Saturn. I can see it much more clearly. Similarly, I am experiencing the three states of the mind from birth till today. All of us. Every day we go to sleep, every day we are awake, every day we dream. But have I known what are the three states? No. How do the three states come? Do I know this? No. How does the sleep state come? How does the, the, the waking world resolve into the sleep state? How does the dream world resolve into the waking? How? How? The whole set of experiences which I have with my body-mind instrument, it resolves. But do I know what is the background to this? No. If I bring the Shastra Pramanam, like the microscope or the telescope, I will be able to understand this, the nature of this world. Jiva Jagat Ishwara is more clear to me after doing Keno Upanishad. Available sense organs are not adequate to study or reveal Chaitanyam, which is the consciousness principle. Our eyes cannot know because it is not designed for knowing consciousness. It is designed for knowing the world. 
for prarabdha karma. To fulfill the prarabdha karma, I take a body and then it, I go through the roles of whatever is the job given to me at a particular point of time. And then I go through the motion of living in this world. It is an automatic process. Waking dream sleep is an automatic process of the Shakti of Ishwara, who is a creator of this world. And in and through this world, I should be able to see there is a consciousness, awareness principle, which we call it as Brahman. That is why I come to study the Upanishads, because they are the Pramanam, like I use this like an intelligent person uses a microscope or a telescope or a heart surgeon. While doing surgery, he uses specific instruments meant for the surgery. Similarly, when I want to know who I am, I use Shastra Pramana, which means Upanishads. The light of the Upanishads, if I let it shine in this intellect, in this body, that light will reveal the nature of the real self. Pramanams are of two types. Paurusheya Pramanam, a Paurusheya Pramanam. There's a technical term, I'm making it very simple. Paurusheya means used by the human intellect. Like Pratyaksha, the intellect uses the sense organs as a source of knowledge. Or Anumanam, inference. Upamanam, examples. Arthapati, another type of inference. Anupalabdi, absence is used as a source of knowledge. Shabda, laukika shabda is, is a source of knowledge. All these what they reveal the jagat made up of five gross elements. The sense organs reveal the five gross elements, which is the Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasaganda. These are all the, what we call it as Jagat, the world. So the whole world is nothing but the sense objects being perceived by the sense organs. And then mind is involved to gather those impulses and take the knowledge. This is how we use the pramanam, the paurusheya pramanam, the sources of knowledge for a human being for understanding the world. There is another set of pramanam, which is called as a paurusheya pramanam, which is called as shastra pramanam. It is the source of knowledge from scriptures. That source of knowledge will reveal, will reveal the inner entity in this universe. What is behind the earth? What is behind the sun? What is behind the body? What is behind the mind? What reveals the emotions in this, in this body? That is what is called as a Paurusheya Pramanam. For that, you have to come to the scriptures. And what will this a Paurusheya Pramanam, what will this source of knowledge will reveal? It reveals the inner essence, the Antaryami principle in the universe and in this body, which is this consciousness principle. This is the ninth point in the introduction of chapter two. So with all this, what Shankaracharya wants to say, with the help of this source of knowledge called as scriptures, called as Upanishad, I understand the Upanishads first. Then what do I do? After understanding, I have to 
use that knowledge in my own intellect. When I use the knowledge to, in my intellect, what happens? Whatever conclusion I had made before the knowledge, it changes because my conception about misconception about myself will change. So what happens is Atma Jnanam leads to change in mindset, change in uh, conception about myself. I change from I am the body or mind to I am the consciousness. This is one point which Shankaracharya brings. Then another point he brings it is, this consciousness or Brahman is not an object. Very, very important in the second chapter. This is the crux of the second chapter, the 11th point in the introduction. This consciousness, we call it as Brahman, is not an object. Any object of the universe can be known or unknown. It can be a direct experience for the sense organs. And it depends on the availability of the instruments like eyes, ears and so on for the sense objects. But what about this consciousness? This consciousness is the subject. It is not an object. It cannot, it cannot be known or it cannot be unknown. Unknown means it is paroksham. It is not in front of the eyes. Known means it is in front of the sense organs. But what is consciousness? It is neither known, neither unknown, but it is me. It is me, the subject. It is always available. Whether the objects, whether the waking state is there or not, consciousness is there. Dream state is there or not, consciousness is there. Sleep state is there or not, consciousness is there. That is why it is called as Nitya Aparoksha Vastu. Nitya Paroksha, that means it is directly known as me. Nitya Upalabhya, upalabhya Manaha. It is always gained. It is never lost. This is something you can never take it or drop it. The objects of the world, you can take it or drop it. We have seen this point in the previous uh, discussions. What is the subject? The subject can never be heyam or upadeyam. These are the two terms we used in the previous talks. So this subject is all the time there. And this is what Upanishad is revealing to me. See how brilliant is this commentary of Shankaracharya and his mindset. How clear is he in, in the knowledge of Vedanta? This chart before you is a very important chart which is missed by almost 99% of the students of Vedanta. Brahman is not an object to be known or unknown. It is not falling in the category of the intellect, but it is the very subject. It is all the time available as I, 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 aham, aham, aham. This is what Lord Krishna says in the, uh, I think the, 20th verse of chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita. He says, the first vibhuti, my first vibhuti is aham. Lord Krishna says, this is the first vibhuti. Aham, aham. This is my first glory. And, uh, and that aham is nothing but it is the reflected consciousness in the mind. That is the first glory. That means 
he, as soon as I get up in the morning, what do I, uh, what do I realize? First, I realize, aham. As soon as you get up, what do you realize? I. Aham atma gudakesha sarva bhuta sarva bhuta sa astitaha aham madhyascha Mad, uh, I am in the middle, I am in the end of this universe. This is the 20th verse of the Bhagavad Gita. Very important glory of Ishvara. So that is the 11th point. The 12th point, through a method of Guru Sishya Sambhada, this Brahman or the subject is revealed as the eye of the eye, the ear of the ear. Indirect method is used to reveal this Atma. In the Bhagavad Gita, we say it is Shetraknya. Atma is called as Shetraknya. I am Atma means I am Shetraknya, the experiencer, the illuminator, the consciousness principle, the Paravidya of Mundaka Upanishad. What is the word Jagat? It is Shabda Sparsha Ruparasaganda. It is Aparavidya, the lower knowledge, which is called in chapter 13 of the Bhagavad Gita as Shetram. Shetram is the lower field of knowledge, field of the world. That is what is called as anatma. It has got gunas. Drishyatvam, it can be seen. Sagunatvam, it has got gunas. Savikaratvam, savikarat means it changes, it modifies. All this is about anatma. Agama pahitvam, it comes and goes in the waking state. Bhautikatvam, it is made up of five elements. All this is dealing with what? Anatma. Anatma means what? Five elements. What about the Shetraknya, the experiencer? It is always the consciousness principle. It is the ultimate experiencer. This ultimate experiencer has no connection ever with the Anatma. It is always there. It is always there in the sleep state, sleep, dream state, and in the uh, waking state. It is not the fourth state, but it is the common state in all the three states. In order to teach the students, it is called as Turiyam, the fourth state. Yet, Chakshushana Pashyati, the eyes cannot reveal the object called as Atma. Atma is the subject. Objectifiability of Brahman is not there. So, eyes cannot see it. There is no question of direct experience of Brahman. That is what Shankaracharya says. Brahman is not far away, is not in front. Therefore, in the first verse of the Second chapter, the author uses the the, the Upanishad uses the word Suveda. Suveda is there in the first verse. The Suveda is used for anything which can be known as an object. But Brahman is not an object, therefore, direct experience, the word direct experience cannot be used for Brahman Jnana. One Brahman with the body, mind, sense, organs is called as Pramata, the same Brahman, the same consciousness without the body, mind, organs is called as Sakshi. Okay? So these are some 14 points. There are many, many other points. I didn't bring up many other things. But uh, when I exchange the notes to you, many, many of you have written, had written to me last week asking for the Keno Upanishad 
Shankaracharya Bhashyam notes I have already sent to all of you who have asked for the notes, who will be reading the notes and sending me a feedback on those notes. Because these notes are very, very uh, beautiful. They are very, uh, very good in revealing our nature. But it requires patience. You have to go through it slowly, understand, digest that knowledge, make it your own knowledge to get the benefit out of these Shankara Bhashyams. See, when we do the Upanishads, initially just understanding what the Upanishad is trying to reveal is one thing. That is what most of the talks on Upanishads on the YouTube and all that you will find. But you cannot get moksha from that. The job of moksha is in the second stage of mananam and nididhyas. Mananam is a process of digesting that knowledge, churning the knowledge in your own mind, and then taking the juice of out, out of that knowledge and making that as your own nature. After you got the uh, clarity of the knowledge, the last portion, Nididhyasnam, is fairly simple. You just have to say, I am Atma all the time. All the time. Till you, till, you, till you have life in this body, remember the fact, the one thing which I learned from the Upanishadic study is, I am the Atma principle. I am not the body. I am not the mind. If you can remember this one simple principle, it will give you tremendous benefit in your life. This is what is called as Jeevan Mukti. This is the essence of the whole study of all what we study for maybe five years. What is the essence? I am not the body and mind. I am part. Practice saying this from today. A hundred times it required. I am Atma. I am Atma. What that Atma is, now you know. It is not in front of me. It is not an object. It is me. I am Sakshi. Sakshi is never in, involved in a transaction, but without the presence of Sakshi, there is no transaction. There is no waking state without Sakshi. There is no dream state without Sakshi. There is no sleep state without Sakshi. It is the inner essence of each one of us. It is the inner essence of the whole universe. If I get this message from the Kano Upanishad, I have been blessed truly by the Lord because this knowledge is a Paurisheya Jnana. It comes by tradition to us. It is a knowledge transferred from one year to another year. You have heard it. You have understood. You pass on the knowledge to the next person down the road. Okay, so that was uh, uh, one thing which I added to the notes. The second thing I added to the notes today is a summary of the five verses. In chapter two, there are five verses. This is predominantly a reflective exercise, which you all have to do it in your own mind. Like the student of Keno Upanishad did it, we all are students of this Upanishad. We have to practice this in our own mind. Before I go ahead with this five verses, I thought I will give you a summary because if you understand the summary, then when you go through the verses, very simple. So now after giving you the introduction, I will now for the probably the, uh, let me see how much time it takes, but I, I think it'll be good to see the summary. And I have added the summary at the end of the fifth verse. 
in the notes now today i have added it it is not there in this notes which i circulated to you but if somebody is interested i can just send it if you like it you just listen to it and uh, both the introduction and the summary have been added today what are these five verses i'll quickly run through them so that you understand the gist of the second chapter the reason i brought this summary is because for the next two weeks there won't be any sessions but you can go through these notes of the second chapter of consisting of five verses understand it reflect upon it in the next two weeks that means on the uh, today is the first on the 8th next saturday and on the 15th the following saturday two saturdays we will not be having sessions our next session will be on the 22nd i'll be back to singapore on uh, 22nd morning and same day evening i will have the sessions you will get the no, you will get the invitation on the 22nd okay what are the five verses and what is the inner essence what is the content what the, what do they are what are they trying to say in the introduction i have said the whole second exercise chapter is nothing but is an extension of the first chapter brahman is something which is called as consciousness it is not a part product or property of the body mind complex that is the essence now there are so a few other things which might be we should know about this brahman this consciousness the first verse says it is not known it is not unknown it is neither a known entity it is neither a unknown entity what does this mean it only means it is not available as an object for the intellect anything to do with the intellect when the mind is in operation it will, you will have either known to you or unknown to you for example general existence is called as brahman general existence it never leaves us similarly general awareness it never leaves us general existence general consciousness is our nature it cannot be it's like the fire fire the light in the fire the burning capacity of a fire this is used by shankaracharya in his, in his commentary for the first verse what he says in the commentary is like a fire cannot remain without the burning capacity similarly i that i cannot exist without existence or consciousness without sat and chit sat and chit is my nature very subtle point but pick it up pick it up this is what is called as realization this is what is called as self realization this is what is called as i know my real nature so the general existence is called as sat is called as brahman it is always there but what about the jiva jiva is called as particular existence either in the waking state or in the dream state or in the sleep state so the individuality will come it is called, when the individuality come there is a reflection of this consciousness in the medium in the waking state the reflection is there in the body in the dream state the reflection is there in the mind predominantly in the sleep state the reflection is neither in the mind neither in the body it is in the causal body which is called as ignorance and what is this ego in me ego is nothing but waker plus dreamer plus sleeper it is the wearer this ego is a wearer of the coat the coat is the mind and the body ego is the one who wears this coat it is conditioned what is unconditioned unconditioned is the content 
of the body, which is conscious. And these are all very deep subjects which I'm discussing. All this is coming from Shankaracharya's Bhashyas. And if you go through these five verses, you will know this yourself. So the end of the ego is the realization of the truth. The moment I drop, learn. Now these are the ways to learn how to drop your ego, the waker in you, the dreamer in you, the sleeper in you has to be dropped cognitively. You don't have to drop it physically. You can't do it physically. It will be there for some time because of prior of the karma. So the end of the ego is a realization of the truth. Very important point. Cognitively. So identified with this weaker I, dreamer I, sleeper I, which is called as the reflected I, I become a jiva. A jiva is born. Identification with the body mind, I become a jiva. The same jiva is there, is, is now realizing I have pure existence without the body and mind. That is my real nature. See how beautiful it is. The Upanishads are so brilliant in, in describing. What cannot be described by words? Where words go and come back. Thoughts go and come back. They cannot reach Brahman. Because thought or a word is an effect. It's a product. It cannot go to the cause. The cause is consciousness. Ultimate cause of this whole universe is this pure Brahman. Second, that is the first verse. Second verse, Brahman is not the known or unknown. Again, it is repeated. For, the, for making the point that it is not an object, the Upanishad repeats the same thing. It is not known or it is not unknown. But it is what comprehends the known and the unknown. It is a light of knowledge, the light of Consciousness, light of Sakshi. is a very important verse, number two. Number three, Brahman is unknown to the wise. It's known means it is known to the ignorant person. What it means is, suppose you say, I know Brahman, then you are ignorant because it cannot be known. But if you say, I, it is, I don't know Brahman, but I know it exists, then you are right. Because it is, you are talking about you yourself. Brahman is the knower principle, the consciousness principle, the knowledge principle. It is me. It is not the object. It is the subject. So, Swami Chinmayananda in his commentary in the book, he says, Atma Jnanam is the cure for the ego disease. Ultimate cure for this ego, I, 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 the, the jiva, the jiva twam. Ultimate knowledge is Atma Jnana. When the rope is perceived, the snake comprehension is gone. Similarly, when Sakshi is perceived, understood, jiva twam, the ego, I drops. And that is what is called as moksha okay very beautiful verse again number four this truth is a witness of three states it is an unchanging entity i have explained to you what is this unchanging it, it is there in the waking it is there in this dream it is there in the sleep it is the consciousness awareness principle don't forget this point it is the ultimate truth about your nature you are always there as consciousness. You, you don't need proof from anybody else. You test it yourself. This knowledge which is there in the fourth verse, I am the Sakshi, I am there always as the consciousness awareness principle. 
mind is getting woken up mind is when it is woken up it experiences the physical body and it goes through the entire drama called as life it is not it is only a delusion but the reality is i am the consciousness knowing this consciousness is what is required through the study of upanishads this consciousness is a changeless illuminator of all the thoughts very important point how to realize this consciousness do you know your mind okay good yes 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 i know the mind i was very angry in the morning i know that i was angry and now i know i am very calm upanishad is asking how do you know it in what light do you see it mind is jadam body is jadam the changeless illuminator you were aware of your emotions one week ago you will be aware of the emotions tomorrow you are you are uh, tossed by the thoughts in the mind and you are feeling disturbed you are feeling some sometimes the thoughts are good very at very few times our thoughts are calm and good and peaceful very very small amount of time in our life where we feel really happy and peaceful but it lasts for a few minutes again we get disturbed because of prana of the karma everything is known by the self evident consciousness this consciousness is self evident we have seen this in the panchadasi in wednesday classes i have taken a full chapter about this self evident consciousness swayam jyoti it is evident all the time there is no other torch light you need to bring to be, make this consciousness to illumine this conscious na tatra suryo bhati na chandra taraka nema vidyato banti kutoya magnihi that mantra of kathopanishad you must remember whenever you think about yourself you remember i am the ever evident awareness principle brahman is an independent entity that awareness principle does not depend on the world as you know in the in the sleep state there is no world there is no body there is only ignorance in the sleep state i don't know myself i don't know the world i don't know anything that is what is called as mula avidya it is called as causal body what the you bring the torch light of upanishad and 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 to show it in the in the in the causal body to wake you up from that mula avidya to who you are so brahman is an independent existent principle it is not a particular experience with the intellect at a particular point of time <laughs> but it is a bed of all experiences which we have in our life good or bad indifferent all knowing this bed of all experiences as the consciousness principle existence principle gives me a tremendous joy because i become aware of this reality because of this consciousness only i say i don't experience anything in sleep and i experience the world in waking state i experience a dream world in the dream state it is the light of consciousness this light of consciousness is eternal that's what the fourth mantra of the second chapter says and maya the shakti of ishvara which controls this entire universe of waking dream and sleep that shakti is eternal one gets moksha liberation from this body by knowing this shakti principle which is embedded in this universe so this gives you an introduction of what is moksha and the last verse tells you 
what how to gain this moksha you gain moksha by knowing that you yourself are brahman i am the consciousness principle i become immortal because consciousness is immortal it neither has birth therefore upanishad says it is ajaha purusha suktam ajoya manasa that is it is the nature of birthlessness that is the nature of that purusha which is described in the 13th chapter of the bhagavad gita also ajaha never born and it never dies this is what in katha upanishad nachiketa got this knowledge from lord yama this is the knowledge the tatra surya bhati comes in katha upanishad that is the knowledge of brahman and what is this what is the nature of this consciousness it is undivided if i know this brahman i become mortal if i don't know this brahman i am reborn in this world because i am still in with mula vidya this consciousness is undivided in all the bodies it bodies are different minds are different but the content in the body and mind is this undivided akhanda akhanda jyoti akhanda atma akhanda means undivided division belongs to the bodies not to consciousness body mind is not the integral part of me but it is it is not integral part it is not intrinsic but it is incidental it is there in the waking state it disappears the problem with all of us is we take the waking state as a complete paramarthika satyam the key to open the upanishad is don't take this waking state as the absolute reality that is the key if you get the key what is the key you should open that consciousness which is the common denominator in the waking dream and sleep which is called as turiyam that is the common denominator if i change that key and open up another door i am ex i am flying into the road of immortality the road of immortality is wide open by using the key of keno upanishad with the same body i can realize this truth which is my own nature once i have realized the truth i have only one prayer left this is the last prayer as in isha vasya upanishad the student thanks lord surya for the knowledge and what is the prayer you thank the five elements pancha bhutas the lord fire agni devata prithvi devata vayu devata aakasha devata varuna devata these are all five devatas which have been holding this body for me for the jiva for the jiva the content the soul in this body that jiva prays to the five elements and thanks the five elements right now at the time of realization self realization atma vidya has come to me because i am blessed by the shastra those who are not blessed by the shastra will not hear this will never come to keno upanishad shankara bhashyam and understand the upanishad so clearly so ultimately at the end of chapter 2 each one of us can say this prayer to the five elements thank the five elements to hold this body till this knowledge has come into this intellect and say you have given me a treasure to so precious i cannot i cannot uh, there is no words to describe 
and while the body is there you surrender the body to the five elements and say from now on it is you the devatas who control this body i am ever free i am jeevan muktaha that is how kano upanishad the second chapter ends it's very beautiful summary and a very very profound introduction which um, i gave today in the in this uh, talk today for almost more than an hour now having given both now we have understood the second chapter brilliantly it is only a question of reading through the notes you will be able to understand every word in the notes from verse number 1 to verse number 5 you can read it during your next to two weeks but i will quickly i will try to go through this now one by one and then we'll continue it when we come back but don't forget today's talk very important talk re listen this talk again and again so that you understand what is kano upanishad and how it's so beautifully structured the first eight verses in the chapter 1 five verses in chapter 2 13 verses shravanam is in the first eight verses mananam is in the second five verses so once you have done these two nididhyasnam is something which you practice yourself because you have understood the truth now you all have to only practice nididhyasanam which means remembering that i am consciousness throughout my life let the experiences come and go they are mortal they are changing but i the experiencer never never change today i am the experiencer consciousness atma tomorrow i am the changeless experiencer consciousness atma 10 years from now i am the changeless consciousness atma if this lesson is understood you have understood not only kano upanishad but you have understood the gist of all the 12 upanishads coming to the verse number 1 we have started with this i went into this this portion the uh, this uh, this particular next slide this is where we we saw the first verse as i told you it's uh, what the teacher is doing is he's testing and he's trying to trap the student he is asking the teacher is asking the question to the students do you know brahman then the student thinks if i say i know brahman it becomes a known category if i do if i say i don't know brahman then it becomes unknown category so both are wrong so what should i do remain silent but can i remain silent no that is why you go to the verse number 2 and 3 that is a very brilliant answer given by the student so brahman doesn't come under the category of known or unknown and therefore it is something different what is that it is like a, a bearer of clothes in the waking state for example coat and trousers are vitalized by whom are used by whom the wearer a sari is used by the lady similarly the police officer gets a salute because of the dress so the physical body is respected when the swami of that body the atma is within it which is when the jiva is within it as the consciousness principle then the body is called as a human body otherwise it is only a, a, a flesh made up of five bhutas pancha bhutas so the content is the live existing body 
What is a dead body then? A dead body is where the existence number two. What is existence number one? Consciousness. What is existence number two? The mind, the reflected consciousness in the mind. When that reflected consciousness has left, what happens? It is, it's going to go to another body and that is why it is called as a dead body. So the difference between a live body and a dead body, what? It is existence, the general existence is there plus the particular existence is there in a live body. In a dead body, what happens? The, the particular existence goes away, but the eternal existence continues. How do I understand this existence, general and particular existence? Take an example. Suppose you have a light, general light in the wall. That is a general light. You see, you have a bulb in the top and you get the general light. But suppose you bring a patch of, a light, a patch of uh, light from a mirror which gets reflected in the wall. So the wall has got one general light from the tube light. There is another light which comes into the patch, which is the, which is a patch coming because of the reflection of a mirror which is kept outside. So the mirror is the mind. The light which comes is the thoughts which come in. The beam, that is the reflection of that consciousness. Consciousness is the general existing principle. When it gets reflected in the through the mirror mind it gets reflected consciousness that light is what is being used by the sense organs this is how you have to understand consciousness consciousness cannot be described directly but through this example you can understand existence can be proved so the reflected pool of light created and collected in the individual mind uh, equipment, which is the antakaranam, is the ego in us. Okay, so what is ego now? Very important definition of ego. Ego is mind plus reflected consciousness. Don't forget this definition. These are all technical terms. You should know very clearly. It is reflected consciousness. But can the reflected consciousness exist without the original consciousness? No. It can never exist. Okay? So that is what is being ex explained in this diagram here. Uh, all the, the this, this is the, uh, this particular wall. In the wall, there is a reflection. Uh, the general existence is the general light. General light principle. In the mind, in the mind is what? It is the reflect, mind is a medium. It is like the mirror, which because of the mirror only, you are seeing that patch of light of the consciousness. When the mirror is gone, what happens in, the, for example, in sleep? That mirror is not there. Therefore, what happens? You are living with general, your own nature. That is why I tell you all the time. In sleep, you are in your own original nature. So if you want to know who am I, try to understand, think in the waking state, what is my nature in the sleep state? Pure consciousness, no world, no body, no mind, but you exist or not, yes, yes, yes. That is your nature. Brahadana Upanishad, Prashna Upanishad, Chandyoga Upanishad tells me repeatedly, when you are sleeping, you are in the lap of your intrinsic nature consciousness. But in sleep state, you can't realize it because that is tamoguna. In the waking state, yes, I can, I can remove that guna and become guna tita atma. Because the same atma is there in the waking state also. But in the waking state, very difficult for me to understand this art. I use the torchlight of the Shastra, which tells me how to bring the dream state and see the Atma, how to bring the sleep state in the waking state and see the Atma in the waking state. I use also the same torchlight to 
brought the mind cognitively and understand the reality right now while listening to this talk. You can drop your mind cognitively and be yourself. If you are able to do it for one split second, you have seen the glimpse of that art. Seen not physically through the eyes, but know it. So the mind is either clean or dirty, convex or concave. The mind can have different type of thoughts and that is what is called as conditioned Atma. Condition means it is a container with the water. What is pure consciousness? Water alone. But without the water alone, you cannot, you need a conditioner. You need a, a, a glass container to hold that water. The mind is the holder of consciousness. That is why in Taitri Upanishad, it says, Yo veda nihitam guhayam parame vyoman. In your own intellect, know that consciousness. You cannot know it outside in a tree or at the wall or, or, in, a, in, a, or in the outside world. No. That consciousness can be known only inside your mind. The instrument is necessary for all intuitive experiences. The tossing of the mind is due to the vasanas. Bhakti sadhana removes the vasanas to a limited extent. Japa is a remembrance of the Lord. Again, it reduces the vasanas. Slowly, I try to use these other steps like yoga, like pilgrimage, temple visits, all that is a help to calm my mind. And why do I need to calm the mind? To realize the unconditioned, pure art. See, we are all seekers of moksha, liberation from this mind that is primary. And what do I realize? Nitya moksha is my real self. It is all, I'm always free. So the truth has nothing to do with the conditioning of the mind. It can be reached with or without the manifestation of the mind. So if you think that you know Atma, you know very little. That is the essence of this first mantra. Atma is never understood as known category. Then can you say Atma is not an unknown? So what is the use of uh, studying the Shastra? No. It does not come under the category of unknown also because it is known or unknown with reference to only your intellect. There is something beyond the intellect, which is Atma, which is the subject, and that is the explanation of the three states of consciousness. Dream, waking, sleep. What is Turiyam? It is the fourth state compared to the three related states, but Turiyam is the ultimate only state. Remember this, Mandukya Upanishad can be very confusing if you don't realize this point. After studying Mandukya Upanishad, uh, the three states of conscious people still asking, where, when I'm going to realize that fourth state? Because they are looking for that state. It's a misconception. A salt doll, salt is a product coming from the water which has evaporated and become salt. Now, salt doll, when it is, uh, reaches the source of the ocean, the, e the doll merges, the salt dissolves. And it, it realizes its true, true form that I am of the nature of this ocean. Similarly, the ego eye, which is always, always separated from the body and keeps on thinking, going around the world, 
when it realizes that realizes the bed of that principle called as ego then the fourth state which is not the fourth state but it is the ultimate state of all the three states the the basis of the three states then what happens the vikshepa shakti in the mind it reduces when this reduces you have what is called as a pure mind so when the vikshepa shakti is gone maya shakti has got two shaktis avarna shakti vikshepa shakti avarna shakti means the covering which has covered the nature of atma vikshepa shakti is the projection of the human mind with all the tosses going up throughout your life so when you chant om the silence between the two chants is the thuriyam state that is the pure state in which i the consciousness existence principle alone is this subjective experience can give us the knowledge of that pure atman which is revealed in the upanishads this self realization is the fulfillment promised by the upanishads it is a very divine mission because you are going deep into the your own nature chidabasa is a concept chidabasa means illumination it is a illumination in the mind the beam of chaitanya when it strikes the mind it produces a reflection that reflected consciousness in that reflected consciousness is this whole world seen this is a very important point what is chidabasa many people don't understand what is reflected conscious now there is a whole one whole sheet on reflected consciousness so if I, I, by now you know what this reflected consciousness i won't go through this entire uh, uh, word by word but just explain to you all the thoughts in the mind are in the light of this chidabasa and chidabasa remember it cannot exist without chit anger jealousy passion lust these are all nothing but ego it is an ego it is a it is made up of thoughts they keep on flowing as soon as you wake up in the morning the desire starts kama kama is nothing but it is ego so the same pramata is the sakshi it is because it is only a reflection don't forget pramata sakshi difference i have explained to you in the introduction use that knowledge when you understand these verses so brahma vidya stops the extroverted mind which is the nature of the ego when this ego stops functioning and realizes its own nature as sakshi then that is called as self realization the serpent hood has gone and what remains is the serpent hood in the in us all of us is this ego and it has where does it merge it merges in the reality in the transcendental reality which is called as chaitanya so when you say i have understood brahman is an intermediary step it is not the final realization of consciousness final realization is in your own intellect when you realize the pure nature of atma and which is beyond the intellect there is a process the whole process has been explained drop your it how to drop this intellect you tell in your seat of meditation all the objects which are experienced by the sense organs in the waking state are incidental they are known and they are unknown 
unknown in the sleep state, known in the waking. But what is I, the consciousness? I am the light which makes them known and makes them unknown. In the sleep state, I am that light which is revealing this truth about the world. The whole world of experiences, they all look very, very real, solid. The world has got novelty. It has got uniqueness. It has got solidity. But then they are all being manifested in the mind and they become unmanifest in the mind. You have to go to the level of your mind and what lies beyond mind, the Atma, to understand the mind itself. The taste of sugar, the love for your son or daughter, you cannot express in words. Similarly, Atma is something you cannot express by words, but it can be understood Understanding is nothing but dropping your misconception that I am the body and mind. Okay, we will stop here. When we start on the 22nd, we will start with the second verse. You, in your free time now, the next two Saturdays, you can go through these uh, talks. Again, you can listen to the talk. Whichever talk you like, the, all the talks are available in the YouTube. You can listen to them. You can revise them. Kano Upanishads is a brilliant Upanishad. Uh, these talks are extremely good because I'm giving you some pointers, some, some notes from the Shankaracharya's Bhashyam. There is no comparison in this world with reference to what you can learn from the commentary of Shankaracharya on all these Upanishads. And if you are able to even get 10% of what the knowledge which comes out from those commentaries is amazing. So with this, I will close. So please remember, there is no class next week and the following week. So on the 8th and on the uh, 15th, there is no class. Our next session will start on the 22nd. And... Uh, with this, I'll close today's talk. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om. Okay. Good. So we have finished uh, the session today. There are no uh, there are no comments on the chat box. So if uh, any of you have any questions, any clarifications required on today's talk, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and you can speak. Um, and you can. Either share what you have learned from today's talk, or if you have a question, you can ask. Sakas, do you have one? Uh, one? Yeah, Manika, then go Sorry. ahead. Yeah, it's a practical, you know, uh, uh, experience. Uh, when we, when you say about uh, when we face the problem in our life, we have to take the torch of Upanishad to realize that no we are we are the consciousness yes uh, but uh, but uh, very difficult to trigger that uh, you know the knowledge uh, yes. when we we get into the action and uh, we forget ourselves that our true nature yeah. and get into the ego okay so the, I the question. yeah so we need to continue the nididhyasanam uh, con uh, to remind ourselves that we are the consciousness and uh, through this can we get this uh, trigger of taking the torch of Upanishad? Okay, good question. Very good. 
See, this is an extremely practical question. Manikandan is uh, is absolutely amazing when it uh, when it comes to asking exactly what one needs to live in this world. See, what you should remember is the following. Whenever you are in the waking state, experiencing and going through your roles in life, you are a mother, you are a father, you are a teacher, um, uh, what what happens is you remember that there is something called as prarabdha karma. So you are you see while you are going through your uh, life, there are two aspects. One aspect is when you are going through the role itself. At that time, you cannot bring your knowledge of the truth, thoughts, light, and all that like that. Because that is prarabdha karma, your body and mind is active, totally active in the world. You are a teacher, you are teaching, you are a worker, you are working in a laptop. You know, that is, that is at that time, no use to bring atma and nothing, nothing. So don't look at bringing, even when there is a problem, suppose there is a problem in the office, you are going through finding out solutions or in the family, there is a uh, you know, you 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 have certain situations in the family. You you argue. You put your point. At that time, it is not required to bring atmic jnana. When do you bring atmic jnana? That is the next question. That is when you have finished your transaction and your mind is going through that transaction in your own as a memory. That is what is called as samsara. You've gone through the transaction, that is the karma, but you're reliving that problem and going it through your mind, it has become a fever in your mind. A fever in the mind is repeatedly thinking of that problem. Again and again, the mind keeps on thinking, why did I behave like this? Why did she behave like this? Why did, you know, you know, in your own mind, you're tortured by your mind. Completely tortured. Each one of us can remember, can experience this. It, everyone can remember, can experience this. That is what is called as samsara. Going through the life is part of the karma, the body, mind, it will go through it. No, it is uncontrollable. You cannot control it. No amount, even a jnani, has to go through his prarabdha karma. You will find him suffering with the physical body. He also has physical pain. He also gets into some problems here and there. You know, in the ashram also, there is a lot of problems. So you can't say that, you know, he has to bring the knowledge and then he, no, that's not possible. Only thing is, when you are alone and you are being, you're being tortured by the thoughts, you feel guilty that you have not done certain things. You feel that you have hurt some people because that is you, you felt that you, you are the karta bhokta of a particular situation. At that time, whenever your mind is disturbing you, it is your own thoughts which is troubling you. At that time, bring this knowledge. I am the light in which these thoughts are disturbing me. I am not the thoughts. I am the light. At that point, you bring this knowledge. You will get the benefit. Hundreds and thousands of People who have gone through this literature, they have done this and they have found immense benefit. Even after death of a person, what troubles you is the thoughts, your own thoughts about that person. At that time, bring this knowledge. I am the Atma. I am the Atma. I am not the mind. Okay? So, Mani Kandan, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You understood the difference? Yeah, yes. It's a very, very useful, you know, uh, uh, teaching. So, you see, I, this, this yes. is given in Panchadasi. It's one of the chapters of Panchadasi. 
uh, there is there's one chapter which talks about the fever in the mind. And that is what is called as the, the, the samsara. Vidyaranya Swami describes this fever and he says, get rid of this jwara of the mind when, and you become aware of it. This jwaram of the mind is the samsara which is troubling us. All the jivas, they, they can't drop their uh, roles because they are a father, they have to follow the role of a, uh, being a father. So they cannot drop their roles and uh, start saying that, okay, I'm, I'm a liberated person. No. Play your roles while you are living in the world, but let the roles not affect you and create samsara. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so helps you to come out of that samsara. It cannot help you to come out of the actual role play. Actual role play is Bhagavan. It is the prar of the karma. There is a universal law. You surrender the body and mind to that Ishwara. Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam. That is your mental surrender to the creator. And then you live a Jeevan Mukta life. Okay. Thank you, Mani Grandan. Shanta has a question. Shanta, what is it? Can you go ahead? Uh, yeah. Uh, namaste, Mahabha. Uh, the question I have got is, yes, in the uh, second chapter, uh, Bhagavan does answer to Arjuna about, um, you know, how does a gunatita or a stated, um, uh, Sita Pradhyam. Pradhyam behaves? <laughs> now, from today's talk, when you said that, uh, yes, the mind calms down when you, you know, the mind is made of gunas and therefore the thoughts come. But if mind, when mind becomes nirguna or, you know, gunatita, then you won't have the thoughts in your mind. So how would you then do your prarabdha karma or you become jivan mukta? And what, what is that in between state where you are walking towards gunatita and say you have reached the point, then you're not going to have thoughts. And your prarabdha karmas are yet not yet finished or uh, because that is something which you have to finish in your birth, right? Uh, because it's a arrow which is shot out and it cannot be taken back. So how would you explain that state where, I mean, with reference to Keno Upanishad, because that sounds very easy to understand here. Um, how would that state be where you are in between the two? Okay, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brilliant question again. Okay, uh, see, this is an intermediary stage of a seeker. Then the knowledge of the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita has come to the seeker's mind, but it has not been absorbed and digested completely. When that knowledge that I am Atma is completely absorbed by the intellect, then this question is an intermediary quest. It is an intermediary stage question. When the seeker has come to realize there is some aspect in me which is Atma, but I am still able, not able to drop my thoughts or drop the Prarabdha karma portion, which the Upanishads revealed to me, there is that intermediary stage. This is this all seekers go through this problem. That is why uh, uh, you require a little bit more of mananam. Let that knowledge, first of all, let that knowledge increase. Through the study of Upanishads, you will increase the knowledge of Atma. Then, through these talks, you will slowly realize, especially when you come to Mandukya Upanishad, you will understand the nature of the waking state, dream state, sleep state, and how to transcend these three states 
or how to transcend sattva rajas and tamas how to transcend and always be in turiyam state always be in that pure blissful state there is a process that process is mananam and nidityas what you are lacking today is these two aspects you have the knowledge so you have got atma gyan now you have to remove the old misconceptions which you have in the intellect the old misconception before the knowledge is what i am the body i am the mind that misconception has res has resulted in a conclusion that i am a jiva so three steps are involved jnanam removal of misconception reaching a conclusion that i am atma these are the three steps so shankaracharya brilliantly brings this point in the keno upanishad in the introductory portion of the keno upanishad bhashyam this particular problem you are asking has been dealt with i will be writing some notes on the keno bhashyam i have already sent out some 300 pages to some seekers uh, so if you go through those notes you will understand your current problem what you are facing it will be there in that introduction portion the second volume i have already sent out the first volume it is there in the and the website also anybody can go and read it or if you want i can send it to you so your question coming back to your question is what you have to do is remember all the experiences in the waking state is an appearance it is an appearance exactly like your dream but with the help of sense organs you are experiencing a solid world in the dream it is not a solid world it is a very uh, pratibhasika satyam so it is relatively easy to drop the dream till you arrive till your intellect your intellect has the knowledge of atma because you have gone through the bhagavad gita you have gone through some aspects of upanishad like in the second chapter of bhagavad gita from verse number 12 to verse number 30 of the second chapter of bhagavad gita lord krishna bombards arjuna with the ultimate atma what it is again and again uh, uh, lord krishna explains the nature of that atma the nature that it is your it is it is never born it is never dying what are you why are you talking about that which never dies or which never is get, getting born there's those brilliant verses from verse number 12 to 30 of the second chapter revise it again and again whenever you can because that is the essence of the whole bhagavad gita and again he brings the same point in the 13th chapter so uh, the problem which you are facing is the knowledge is there but it has not gone deep in your mind in your subconscious level that i am the atma therefore thoughts of the world are still disturbing you don't know how the prarabdha karmas uh, thoughts are to be handled what upanishad says is let the role play continue because it is an arrow which has been shot you can't stop it nobody can stop it but what you need is a little bit more purity of your intellect to learn that these are all mithya the solution to your problem is accept all whatever you cannot change accept it first it is there but it is mithya it will be there it will be it will be gone again it will be there it will be gone you see waking state will come again it will be gone again waking state will come again you will have some experience again it will be gone 
So let it come and go. Uh, let it uh, let it let it sink into your subconscious mind that these are all appearances. Let the appearances come. Let me let that a jiva who is in this body face these appearances as per the law of karma. But I am now liberated. I am free. Tell yourself. I am free from the mind. You see the, the difference between Pramata and Sakshi, which I explained in this I talk at the beginning. Yes, it's a brilliant description. Pramata and Sakshi. Pramata, you cannot change. It will go through Prarabdha Karma. Sakshi is nature. It is intrinsic nature. You only can know it and claim that that is my Swarup. So claiming that sorupam of mind will help me to solve your current problem. Am I clear, uh, Shantar? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I think I've got a long way to go, but I will learn. No, no, but it's so not, it's at, totally least, at least you're becoming aware of it. You see, the, the question which you're asking is a very deep question because it is troubling you. At, at the same time, you are not sure how to, how to overcome that. Uh, the... the the only way to overcome is let your mind go through this and and see that these are only uh, momentary experiences of the mind. It has got nothing to do with me, the earth. I am always immortal. I am changeless. Thank you. See, the, the, what you should say is, I am the Sakshi. Mm. different than the thoughts. Mm. Sakshi is immortal. Thoughts are coming and going in Sakshi. Mm. I am Sakshi. Repeat this sentence 10 times a day and whenever your mind is uh, mm. uh, doubting something, thinking and you know about something, immediately rem remember this uh, torchlight example. I am the Sakshi, I am not the thoughts, I am the illuminator of the thoughts. In my light, the thoughts are coming and thoughts are going. You see, what you should also realize is that thought which was there in the morning, it was there and then it left. Mm. Learn how to uh, uh, live with your thoughts and not get entangled in your thoughts. This is a very fine, yeah, it's a very fine, it's a very fine uh, uh, refinement in your mind. Mm -hmm. Let the thoughts come, I will learn to handle it, and I will learn how to not get involved with it. Mm -hmm. Like in chapter six of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, whenever the mind goes, outside into the world bring it, bring it back yes, bring yes. it back bring it back where do you bring it to the consciousness. consciousness because it is from this consciousness only the thoughts are rising mm. consciousness can never be objectified it can never be seen it can never be heard it can never be thought about it is only i can claim i am this consciousness and it is and remember this consciousness is, is is not changing. That is a very, very important factor. Okay? So, thank you. Thank you. There is one note here um, meditation session. Okay, today I don't have a meditation session. Uh, normally on Saturdays, I don't have. On Wednesday classes, I have a meditation. Okay, so if you're interested, meditation is on Wednesdays. I have a 10 minute or 15 minute meditation sessions. You can attend them. I have more than 100 videos of meditation in my uh, YouTube. If you're interested in meditation talks, uh, uh, you can go through them. If you want to learn about a little bit more on meditation, how to use meditation as a technique for advanced seekers, there are some brilliant notes on meditation which I have. Uh, again, those I, that I will share it if you are really interested and you want to go through them, practice them. It's a it's a very big exercise. 
Okay, but anyway, you can attend uh, uh, next two weeks. There are no classes uh, from next Thursday uh, uh, onwards. I'm, I'm not here in uh, Singapore, so I won't be able to take classes. But on 22nd, the session start again. For another two, three weeks, again, I'll be traveling. But anyway, the as of now, 22nd is the date. Uh, that's a Saturday. But for meditation, like I said, please go. Uh, if you are interested, you can write to me. I can send you the meditation link in the YouTube. You can watch it. Or I, you might have received my all the classes uh, uh, link. Okay, thank you. Uh, Anybody, okay, there was another question here. Bharat, observations, initially there's a seeker in samsara. Through teaching, consider introduced when understood they can be dropped, yes. Finally, the seeker in samsara is gone and what is left is hard to express experience, just like the story of the 70s. Yes, you're right. See, the once the seeker is gone, uh, what does the seeker realize? Seeker realize, realizes I am always free. Always free. Because I am Atma. Nitya Mukta Surupaha is the ultimate realization of a seeker. This is what the study of Upanishads and Shankaracharya's Bhashyam will help you. Because my talks are not just for listening and forgetting. My talks are how to transform yourself. So, the seekerhood is gone when you realize that mind is the one which was running after knowledge after knowledge, knowledge after knowledge, seeking this knowledge, that knowledge, that knowledge, again and again running after. And then the mind realizes that this is a never-ending exercise. It will never stop. I have to put a stop to that, turn the mind's direction towards Atma, and when you turn your mind's attention towards Atma, what do you realize? What you realize is, I am not the waker. Waking is a is, is a status of me when the mind is woken up. I'm not a dreamer. When I'm not a dreamer, when I realize I'm a waker. When do I realize I'm not a waker? When you come to the study of Upanishads and you Upanishad torchlight, you put on the three states. What does Upanishad says? Upanishad says, I am Turiya Atma. Turiya Atma is not the fourth state but it is the continuous invariable state in all the three states. That is when the seeker hood has gone and it realizes I am Atma, I am Atma, I am Atma, I am the pure light, I am immortal. The fifth verse of the second chapter of King Upanishad, again and again tells you, uh, the, the, uh, and also there's another verse, the third verse, I think, Pratibhoda Viditam Matam. Very, very important mantra of Kino Upanishad. Pratibhoda. Pratibhoda means what? It is before the knowledge, particular knowledge arises, I am the Pratibhoda. I am the Bhoda and the knowledge before the particular knowledge, which means what? I am the general consciousness principle. Before a thought rises in my mind about doing something, about being a karta or a bhokta, what is there? I am there. That I is sakshi. That I is immortal. And that I consciousness is an extremely subtle thing. Beyond the mind, beyond the three gunas. Therefore, you have to only use Upanishadic torchlight to know that Atma and claim that as my Swarupa. Okay? Yeah, Vijay, can you go ahead? You have a question? Uh, Hari Om Shekharji, thank you very, very much. Brilliant exposition. Um, especially the first question, actually, it, by, it hijacked my thought. Um, I just wanted to refer those these two verses, which actually you've already given, 256 and uh, 330, as a question answer for the same uh, question which I think someone asked you in the first one. The, it says, uh, 
ದುಃಖೇಶು ಅನು ವಿಘ್ನ ಮನಃ ಸುಖೇಶು ವಿಗತಸ್ಪರ ವೀತರಾಗ ಮಯಕ್ರೋಧ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿಧಿ ಮುನಿ ಅನಿರುಚ್ಛತೆ ದನ್ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೇ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಈ ಸೇಸ್ ನಿರಾಶಿ ನಿರ್ಮಮೋ ಭೂತ್ ಯುದ್ಧ ಸ್ವ ವಿಗತ ಜ್ವರ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೇ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಸಂಡರ್ ಮೈ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ರೈಟ್ಲಿ ಸೆಟ್ ನೋ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಜೀವತ್ವ ಆರ್ ದ ಸತ್ಯತ್ವ ಟು ದ ಜಗತ್ ಆಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಟೇಕ್ ಮೈ ಬಾಡಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಐ ಸಫರ್ ವೆರ್ ಆಸ್ ಲಾಡ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಚಾಯ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪೇನ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ದ ಪೇನ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಮಚ್ ಮಚ್ ಮೋರ್ ಪೇನ್ಫುಲ್ ಲೆಟ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಎನಿ ವೇ ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ವಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಇನ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ so most of our times especially me right you know the problem here is uh, physical physically the problems also i can let go but um, if something doesn't happen as per my expectation especially something which i feel really restless about is what happens if my children don't listen to me what happens if this doesn't happen right, yeah. what the world thinks so you know that loka vasana i think is one of the most difficult why it makes me suffer more than anything else um i think that is what is coming uh, to to as a question as to why do i really mentally suffer but uh, today's question as i wanted to ask you is i think you had given um, beautiful intro to kutastha deepa prakarana when you took us through the chidabasa yes. so my question to you hence will be uh, the, the the general uh, light of consciousness on the wall visavi the particular or focused light as a reflection from the mirror which is nothing but illumined body with these two consciousness the mind which focuses through the reflected consciousness gives those small small glitters which falls on the wall right the particular yes, glitters yes, which are the right. thoughts yeah now now um now i know that i cannot mentally make my mind zero of thoughts the only way i probably i can do is i can make all the thoughts homogeneous or uniform with the thoughts of the lord that's possible now the thing here is i cannot undo those flashes of light because the reflection is going to happen as long as my body mind becomes the medium that that reflected consciousness is going to be there that those dark spots are going to be there now how do i ensure that dark parts uh, the darker versions of light or those glitters uh, those are other otherwise called vrittis don't are not unhomogeneous to the general light how do i make that of course purity of mind through shastras you have given us the shravana marana vidyasa but is that the only way or how do i how do i homogeneize it how do i uniformize it yeah okay so the first answer to your first question is about the loka vasana the children don't disturb they also disturb my and how to get rid, how to cross over those problems you should understand the children and the problems which we we face with them without them are all part of the karma it is a part and parcel of the part of the karma which is being fulfilled through this body so let it come like okay they okay they they see the, uh, uh, any problem which comes into our mind is because of prarabdha the the moment you wake up in the morning you see a body it it is prarabdha karma it is it will be there let the body go through it let the mind go through the day uh, some days you are very brilliant you look uh, look look at the world in a different with a different uh, with a different view you sometimes very happy and you say okay i'll let me just run through it and it's a, just a passing pace so the the most important so that is answer to the first question uh, about the children and how to cross over now the second question which you are raising is how to uh, again uh, that the patch of light is so disturbing that i can't drop it and go back to the general light see this problem is because we are giving attention to the patch of light and it is we have to churn we have to slowly learn how to move away from identification again and again to the patch of light and how to move that is a it said it's a deliberate exercise it is a very difficult exercise it is not an easy exercise it is a difficult it is a, it is a difficult exercise but it is a deliberate exercise i have to learn the art of living with the general light as myself which uh, like i said the techniques to do that is when you get up in the morning or get up and go to sleep in the night remember yourself i am the sakshi 
in the sleep state, before you sleep, you say, I'm going back to my nature. I'm going back to my own self. Before you, anybody before you go to sleep, just tell yourself. Sleep is a natural state of me going back to my nature. And when you get up from the sleep in the morning, I have got up from my real nature and getting into this world. This is what is the uh, pravesha of a jiva into this body every day in the morning. He leaves this body, the jiva leaves this body, as if he is leaving it for good, and he goes to sleep. And then again, the next day morning, he again takes up the body, is like the reflection coming back into this body for a momentary period of a waking state of, you know, you listen, you go through your mobile, you go through all the, you know, that's whole, that is what is jiva from. So, what will help you to get rid of this is the remembrance that it is mithya. Mithya means it is an appearance you cannot avoid, but it is not satya. Satya to buddhi on the waking state, if it gets reduced and you change that satya to buddhi to mithya to buddhi, through the study of Upanishads, a little bit more reflection is required on the Upanishadic study. See, what will happen is when you go through these uh, uh, very deep analysis of Keno Upanishad, uh, you will realize the fact that it is Atma which is center. Waking dream and sleep is not the center. The moment Atma becomes the center and the waking dream is on the periphery, the whole Vedanta has blessed you. Today, the waking is in the center, Atma is very far away. For some people who have not come into Upanishad, Atma is unknown. How to make that Atma known, then realize the Atma as your nature, they are, they are very, very far away. So, to cut short again, two things remember. Waking state itself is mithya. Whole state of waking. It's not only your uh, this thing. The whole state, what you are experiencing as the world. The world experience is nothing but puncha sense organs interacting with the sense objects. Again, remember the Bhagavad Gita verses. Naivakinchit karomiti. The entire world of uh, the sense objects and the sense organs reacting is this world of Vyavahara, which it is the world of samsara. But I am not that. I am independent entity called as Atma. That, you see, the, the, like I said uh, to Shanta also, that, that it has to get absorbed. The knowledge has come, but it has to be digested. It has to become the core of your personality. And that will become when you do a little bit more manana, because manana is an independent exercise. You, you, you don't have to use any shastra and all that. It is something which happens in your own mind when your own mind thinks about what you have learned in the shastra. That is what is called as manana. It will be very few instances. You see, you, your, each one's mananam will be a very small fraction of a second, uh, fractions of minutes in, in, a, in a day's uh, 24 hours. But that is very useful because those are the things which goes deep into your subconscious mind. Okay, so digestion of the more uh, uh, atma jnana, mithyatva buddhi, Development of Mithya Dovodhi, these are the two solutions to your question. Thank you, Shekhaji. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Bharat, you, are, you have a question. Can you? Hello, Shekhaji. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, just a few a few quick points. First of all, um, that um, uh, Ken Upanishad with Shankara's Pasham that, that you sent over, I think it's amazing. It's um, to under to even understand it. I'm going through other Shankar, other translations of 
you know, Upanishad. And um, it's, I, it's, I, I have to go very, very slowly and carefully in order to relate each point made. And um, I, I, I think this is brilliant. The hard way is the best way. Uh, that's that's uh, that's no, no, you, you, you at least make right. a start, you know. You at least yeah. make a start, you you will find your way because uh, I, I, exactly. I, 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 so thank you very much for that, and I, and I, I, I will finish it. The other thing I wanted to ask is that, um, um, it's just a point of clarification about um, Jidavasa. So in, initially we we have um Vikshepa in our mind uh constant fluttering of the mind and um so is it the case that we we use the word jidavasa to to bring some sort of focus to allow the teachings to take place but then as we as we start noticing the mind more and more and more we and we we gain that distance initially so that distance is there which which helps us to to um not get taken in by whatever is happening that that jidabasa is it's it's always it's always been the general consciousness just like in that gana upanishad the the it it is on the it, that whose presence generates and directs the mind it's it's always been that it's just that initially as a seeker we we are we are calling that vidapasa is that correct yeah you're right initially as a seeker your mind is nothing but actually this consciousness. It's, it's just consciousness all the time. It always it was always consciousness. Consciousness. It is that of what is getting revealed by the uh, by the shastra. But yeah. in that in that consciousness, which we call it as a mind, the problem is it is not hundred percent consciousness. If it was hundred percent consciousness, it will be akarta abhokta. It will be nirguna tattvam. It will be. It will not be that. Now, so this, what we are experiencing as the mind is a mixture. It is an unholy mixture of the pure consciousness with the material called as the subtle body, which is the mind. That subtle body is backed up by the causal body which has got ignorance and it's got all the vasanas. So the problem is our, you, 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 what, what you have uh, identified is correct. Mind together with this reflected consciousness is the one which is the focus of our attention to come for liberation. What helps liberation as moksha is dissecting the mind and saying that I am the consciousness, I get reflected in this mind. Now I have learned that my nature is, I am that consciousness, which is the ultimate Jagat Karna, Brahma. See that knowledge, you get only from the scriptures. Yes. That knowledge, once that knowledge comes, because you have reached your jiva, uh, the, the jiva portion in your, in your mind, but now you are not able to understand and come out of that mind, which has got the knot. The knot of the reflected consciousness with the mind is the knot of avidya. It is the Mula Avidya. It is that there is uh, uh, intangible, uh, 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 intangible connection of the reflected consciousness with the mind. That connection has to be broken up repeatedly by saying, I am Atma. 
I, I have to I have to say that the um um no, thank you very much. I'm I'm re I'm listening again to Ramana Maharashi Sadashanam. Yes. And and it's exactly exactly this. Yes, that's correct. You see, what Ramana Maharishi revealed in Sadarshanam is exactly what Shankaracharya is revealing in Keno Upanishad Bhashyams. Same, same subject matter. The reality is the same. What Ramana Maharishi realized in his meditation as the truth, it is 100% the same what Shankaracharya is trying to reveal to us in Keno Upanishad. Beautiful. So the, the, the more I, I, I uh, actually, Bharat, you are a very advanced seeker uh, and you have crossed several uh, milestones in the path of spirituality. And you will enjoy the Shankara Bhashyams when you go deeper and deeper into it. There, are, there is a lot more uh, which you will learn. Um, Focus on Shankara Bhashyam on only Keno Upanishad right now because let that sink in because it's such a beautiful commentary. It, uh, it, is, um, it is something which can take you to the ultimate uh, reality. And once you have reached that ultimate reality, then what happens is there's a cognitive change in your understanding. It is something you will realize it is a benefit it is the benefit of knowledge atma jnanam there is drishta phalam and that drishta phalam is what is called as jivan mukta when your atma realizes that it is an independent entity and the world is just coming and going uh, that is the time when your own intellect accepts the truth of the Upanishads. When, the, when your own intellect with absolutely no doubt, that is what is called as uh, Dhrida Jnana, and it is called as uh, uh, clear knowledge. Till that clear knowledge comes, you will still be, uh, you know, having some doubt some uh, you will you, you will be still walking the path uh, but with some doubts here and there but this will get clarified when you study the bhashya i will be uh, writing the second volume i mean the process but uh, once that finishes uh, this second chapter is also a very brilliant five verses uh, extremely good commentary by shankaracharya uh, uh, which i seen it is uh, it's really remarkable he is amazing and uh, it's good i'm i'm glad that you're enjoying the commentary thank you thank you very much well, thank you okay so i think we will uh, meet again on the 22nd and uh, if you have any questions like this you can always write to me uh, we can have a discussion uh, uh, that's all for the uh, for the day today and uh, we'll we'll catch up okay thank you namaste namaste, namaste. thank you thank you yeah. bye thank you very much thank you